is kind of uh, make the most of what we have the most of here, if you will, um, and that's sunshine. Probably most unique thing about the desert is that it is sunny most of the time, and that sunshine is, is quite striking. And so if you design not just to keep the sun out, which we need to do to make things comfortable, obviously, but you also use the sunshine almost as a paintbrush to actually kind of, you know, design an architecture that takes advantage of that. Our lifestyle changes so much because everything we do in terms of design is incorporating that exterior to the interior, the desert. On each one of these mountain sites all around, there's a different kind of microclimate for each one of those mountains. Each one has its own specific kinds of plants that grows on it. You know, it's gorgeous, and those are the things that influence us in our design, but it's also what brings people to the desert. One of the unique things about this property, and like a lot of properties here, is when you're down at kind of ground level, you're kind of looking in the trees and you might see the mountains peeking over the top. But the unique thing about this house, it's an upside down house with the main living space in the second floor. And as soon as you get up here, you're afforded views of mountains literally 360 all the way around. And that only takes like 10 feet of elevation uh, for that to happen. The masonry is an important part of the elements of this house, so we start with the exterior materials that Brent presents and we look at how they transition through the house because every block has a certain color and texture to it and that directs us as to what our interior materials and colors are going to be so that they all flow. We've got the curved block wall that is kind of that protective shell, if you will, from the street, from the western hot sun. And then we have some penetrations in that um, with kind of the glass cube sticking out at the guest bedroom and kind of the slots that are cut into that to kind of create a, a sculptural pattern, if you will, more solid than void. And then we get the dramatic entry, which is we have kind of the flying roof, the exposed structure that supports that roof and then continues kind of out into the sky. As you enter the front door, the space as you are entering is almost a museum quality. The walls are tall, the space is pure, and then as your eye is directed up to the main level, again, it's continuing that museum quality. So you end up on the top landing with this gorgeous painting right at the top. And it's a huge space, so it affords a, a really big piece of art. Very little confusion when it comes to entering this house, especially on this level, because it's one open floor plan. And that open floor plan immediately gives you all the cues you need. Do I want to go to the living room, the dining room, or the kitchen? They wanted a kitchen that they could regularly have like 12 people in their family be here. Everybody is different in how they cook. Some couples cook in pairs, some cook you know, by themselves. Um, some are from different cultures where cooking is very different than what we're used to, as was in this house. So thinking about the kinds of things that would be cooked in this kitchen, how they would be cooked in this kitchen, all went into the design of it. Well, we wanted to create almost a perch-like seating nook. We actually sized it large enough that it could have a freestanding table in it and chairs if it wanted to. Um, the final design was one where we actually create a built-in banquette around that that um, I have to say Elizabeth picked out a fantastic material that really just makes it sing. But you know that perch-like quality, I wanted a place where you could go hang out at the table and literally see what really this house is all about, the view in all three directions. You see mountain views from that space like you can see from no other place. One of the things that we're very fortunate to have is a higher level of light than most places in the United States. 
So when you're floating above the Earth, the first thing that you see are those views. That, coupled with the fact that you get a glimpse of the pool, the clouds, the sky, the blue, sort of dictated what the palette was going to be in here. So all of this just becomes an extension of the outside. We design homes that tell time because we do use the sun uh, both in, in the actual light and the shadow uh, to actually transform a space um, so that it changes throughout the entire day. We're often trying to design spaces that are somewhat intimate, but then can be expanded to be more grand when you have more people that kind of fill the space. So a space like this, with its white ceilings, and then you have white soffits on the outside, you have the same material on the floor that then flows to the outside. You open those doors, and visually, this space feels like it's twice as large as it is. In fact, functionally, it expands to be twice as large as it is. So if you're sitting in here as a couple, watching TV and the fire going, it feels intimate. You open everything up and invite 50 of your friends over, and now it's a big party space. The master bedroom's on the east side of the house, so it gets brilliant morning light. So if you're a morning person, it is great. The, the master bedroom we created to maximize the views from the bed. You look out, you see the fire going, you see the TV if that's what you want to watch, and then you look out the glass and you see the city lights in the mountains. The master bathroom is very clean lined. These elements separate the vanity area from the shower. So it's not just a, a glass cube of a shower, it's a beautiful backdrop to the tub, which then you walk around both sides and you get into this long, narrow shower that's very elegant. As you come into the front entry and you come up the stairs to the first mid-level, you have a choice. You can go up or you can go down. As you go down, you have another wonderful window that looks directly outside again, and it frames all of that landscape. It uh, affords a lot of different activities. This is where you can play pool, you can exercise, there's a wonderful bar down there, and a great television, and a very, very comfortable sofa. The way the house is designed, it really is thinking about how the family was going to use the space. This upper level being more kind of the adult, the parent space, if you will, so, you know, more dining and adult type functions in the kitchen, um, but then the lower level being the kids and the activity space. I should be so lucky to live in a house like this as a kid. Um, no, I think it's a fantastic place. I mean, again, it's a fairly universal space, so a lot can happen. It can change over time as the kids age and their interests change and so forth. Those things all contributed to give this house the form it has.